Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of uh, PegNet Weekly Updates. We're on the 10th or 11th week now that we've been doing it, uh, starting to lose track, which is a good thing. Um, so I wanted to lead in. Um, I've got with me David Johnson and Stephen Maisley. Yes. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. So let's, um, let's dive right in and um, cover some of the basics uh, about what the progress and the activity has been for PegNet. That's the purpose of these videos here. Um, David, do you want to highlight uh, anything about what you've seen this past week with um, maybe the hash rate and the, the mining activity? Sure. Yeah, we've seen continue to see a pretty good growth in the hash rate. Uh, I believe we've now officially crossed 2 billion hash per second which is a big deal. Uh, I wanna say that's equivalent to 100,000 or more than 100,000 uh, laptops worth of hash power. So a lot of people have joined the network. So that's really cool to see. It's almost like this uh, stair step uh, on, the chair, on the chart, right? You know, where there's, you know, the move to like 30 million and then a few hundred million and then half a billion and a billion. And now we're getting towards uh, 2 billion in uh, hash rate pretty consistently. So yeah, no, that's really exciting to see. Um, you know, other than that, you know, there's just so many ideas jumping around the ecosystem uh, about how to improve the incentives and economics. You know, people are looking at a lot of different uh, methods that uh, could increase liquidity. There's a lot of cool ideas to use uh, Uniswap and other uh, protocols in the Ethereum infrastructure now that we have ERC-20. Uh, bridge set up between native pigment assets and ERC-20 assets. So I think that's going to be um, sort of maybe the story of the next few weeks is how do we hook into all of that infrastructure now that we have those rails. Yeah, I'd say so. I think, um, Stephen, do you have anything to add there from the dev side that uh, you've been working on and any cool ideas or involvement that you've seen this last week? I definitely saw an uptick in some people uh, making some comments along the lines of new pips, uh, new developers coming to the space and obviously running some local test nets. So I'm assuming there's some things in the works that uh, we may not know about. Um, as far as development on PegNet D, we have written um, the uh, ERC-20 um, linked addresses on Factum. So you can have the same private key owning tokens on the Pegnet chain and, and the Ethereum chain. Um, so that'd be great for the gateway um, and for users who want to move back and forth. Aside from that, we're just doing a lot of kind of stability things. Um, we've been having a lot of momentum in the past, so we're kind of coming back and adding some features that we've noticed uh, may help some uh, users just uh, making sure they have their updated nodes, make sure they're, right, they're on the right chain, things like that. So a lot of stability improvements, a lot of things just making sure people are uh, using Pegnet properly. And will that result in uh, an update fairly soon, Stephen? What's your expectation on timeline? Yeah, so right now um, we, we have the code done. I have it being reviewed by uh, a few other developers. So I'm hoping to finish these changes off um, and then we can announce, um, I guess a week out, maybe a week and a half out for the hard work. Um, that'll include as well a change that I'm happy about because you notice that if people update late after the fork, We've had exchanges update late and have bad states. So they have to take, take their node down and make sure they're in the right uh, state. So now the node itself will identify if it's in the wrong state and make sure that no users are going to be running like an invalid uh, uh, invalid code base pretty much. Uh, so that's going to be really nice going forward. Like I said, a lot of the changes are just making, we're addressing some of the issues we saw in the past, trying to reduce the amount of support that developers have to provide by writing it in the code. Awesome. Sounds good. We'll uh, look forward to seeing that release. Yeah, yeah definitely. And uh, we'll keep everyone updated, of course. Um, with that, if you're watching this video here on YouTube, we'll have all of the links below on a number of things. But I want to highlight, um, David, thank you so much for taking the lead on this. And I know that others have followed in your footsteps with being really generous to donate um, to development work and you know progress uh, making progress on the pegnet system and um, so if you are a developer or if you are a marketer or designer 
whatever the case might be, um, let me see if I can share my screen here again. I did pull up a link there that you authored, David, um, for the PegNet improvement proposals. So that link will be in the bottom of the description here for anyone that wants to, and they can go ahead and click this Google Doc link, read through the article and um, submit whatever it is that they want to contribute towards. And, um, you know, hopefully that helps with the growth of this system. Awesome. Yeah, no, I hope people make donations. I mean, developers have been coming up with all kinds of cool ideas for mobile wallets or wallet integrations. There's so much we can do, I think, to improve the user interface, just make it easier for people to move around all these pegged assets. Been watching the network. Uh, I see somebody's moved a bunch of money, like $150,000 worth into pegged ether. And it'll be interesting over time whether there's sort of a correlation to uh, the bullishness in the market on a particular asset and how we see those flows inside PegNet because it's super easy to rebalance your portfolio inside of PegNet. So it'd be interesting to see if it's sort of like a leading indicator for where the, uh, the market sentiment is going anyway. And so uh, eh, I'm just keeping an eye on, on that. Um, you know, uh, other than that, you know, just uh, a ton of stuff going on in the ecosystem. You know, uh, somebody was releasing a mining guide the other day. Uh, and posted that video, uh, General Bitcoin, uh, you know, very official. And, uh, you know, he did a cool little video of, I think, the Oryx pool and was also doing one on the Prosper. And so, no, it's really cool to see sort of just people organically coming up with uh, cool content and, and posting it to the community. I certainly agree with that. I'm sure Stephen does as well from the development side. Um, David, your shirt is distracting me. Can we see your shirt? <laughs> it's the one from Osaka. So it's got a <laughs> narwhal, sushi, a cat, and azure. And it says Bildel on azure, Osaka 2019. So you're welcome. You're welcome, crypto <laughs> closet. You know, my, my closet is full of crypto conference t-shirts, pretty much all I wear. You know what I would love to see? Uh, I was gonna bring this up. I would love to see people representing Pegnet. Like if you're going to a conference, let us know. Maybe we can try to find a way to get you a t-shirt and snap a photo or two and share it. I'd love yeah, to see totally that. have Pegnet t-shirts. Um, I saw somebody at a conference recently printed out hundreds of Pegnet logos and was just handing them out uh, to everybody at the conference, which is pretty cool to see. You know, you, you know when people are just, you know, spontaneously printing the logo and handing it out at conferences, you're, you know, sort of on the right track when it comes to community building. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I personally love paying attention to and I love working with other projects and businesses on cultural relevance. And I think we had this conversation in Discord some time ago um, about PegNet. And I think, David, you'd mentioned, you said, do you know what the, the requirement was for Ethereum's logo? And it was to make it so easy that anybody could spray paint it on a wall. And yeah, that a kid could spray paint it on the wall. Like that, yeah. was, that was like literally the uh, design requirement. Like, simple, elegant, you know, you know, bare bones, you know, so I thought that was, that was pretty smart. I think PegNet has that. I think PegNet in terms of having that like cultural relevance and affinity from people, once they really start to understand it and the movement behind it, I mean, what's not to get behind? Like who doesn't want to get behind what PegNet represents for them? And so, uh, yeah, talk to me if you want to spray paint walls or slap stickers in bathrooms. <laughs> I, I that's, mean, uh, that's a very Miami thing. Something. that They embrace the graffiti. <laughs> All legal, of course. All let, let, me, let me preface this. I live in Miami, and if you're familiar with Miami, Miami is known for graffiti. So if you live in Idaho in a nice little town, probably shouldn't message me. <laughs> but... Anyway, um, anything else uh, that we should cover in terms of updates? Uh, you got Davos coming up next week. You'll be yep. out in Switzerland. 
Yep, um, I'll be in St. Moritz first and then in Davos. So anybody headed to Switzerland in the Pignet community, shoot me a message, love to hang out. There'll be tons of events that we can go to. So, you know, should be a blast. Yeah. I will be speaking in at least one panel related to stable coins at a Crypto Mountain event. Uh, so if people want to check that out, uh, and it's on the, I believe, 20th. Uh, and so uh, I'll send out, or we can post some details in the link below. But, you know, that should be fun. Yeah, also um, the Crypto Valley Summit, had a chat with them earlier this week. Um, I think they'll be putting the agenda out soon. Um, but David, you are slated to have a, a couple, one nice little fireside chat, I believe with Charles Hoskins. So that'll be exciting. And then um, sharing a panel with him as well mm -hmm. in Davos. Sure, and then I think there's a demo day event before that on the 21st. So yeah, it should be packed with uh, crypto stuff. So again, the, uh, the trick, don't go to the main conference. Like, you don't need to shake hands with, you know, slimy politicians, you know, come and hang out with the crypto nerds on the promenade and uh, go to side events. That's, that's what it's all about. So if this video doesn't really um, make us look like a bunch of cypherpunks and anarchists, you know, graffiti on walls and don't talk to slimy politicians and, you know, be your own bank and asset manager. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I think almost everybody knows politicians. Hopefully. That's like, sort of like a universal. I don't think you have to be a cyberpunk to, <laughs> yeah. cyber to believe that. Uh, hopefully YouTube doesn't catch on and censor us and take our videos down. Oh, no. That that, that would be good. Nice Streisand effect. Pegnet banned again from YouTube for yeah. edgy content. Right. Yeah. Us wearing Norwals on our t-shirts. <laughs> Sushi found it. We're, we're real threatening, aren't we? With cats. <laughs> Sorry. Glad you appreciate that. <laughs> well, I think um, unless there's any final thoughts or words, we can uh, wrap this weekly update out. Please catch us in the Discord, catch us on Telegram, catch us on WeChat, <laughs> catch us on LinkedIn, wherever you're at. We're there. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, yeah. Stephen. Cheers, everyone. Nice week. Bye. Bye. See you guys.